Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the uh, one o'clock show. I'm trying to uh, fill in for uh, uh, Larry's not here today. Let me just see if I can move. Yes, I can. So what we're looking at in terms of the market itself, I've been discussing in my show and for my subscribers to my opening call, that this is the period that I expected some, some form of consolidation to take place. And the consolidation should see the Dow still the leader, S&P next, the QQQs come after that. I'll just show you a couple of techniques just now so that we can get into the techniques uh, as, I'm, as I'm running through the show. So I like to use uh, uh, narrow rectangles and large rectangles. And what I was talking about yesterday, I was saying from Thursday, this past Thursday, We've been, I wonder if I've still got the chart here, if it goes back long enough. Yep, it does. Let me see if I can squeeze it close. Yes, I can. No, I can't. Yes, I can. So you see this narrow, this narrow rectangle between 41.55 and the E-mini contract that started at Thursday after the close and a low of 41.30. Look how long we've been in this narrow range. This is now Thursday uh, evening. Friday, Sunday night, Monday, today's Tuesday, and we are still, with, we're at 41.18. We've broken to the lower part, but look how long we lasted in this rectangle. Going, to, I won't go through the chapter wave notation just yet. We went out of it, which says that this dashed line, which is the midpoint of the long, narrow rectangle, if after that move outside, comes back and takes out that support, there's a real good chance you're going to take out... A, a, Go towards or probably take out the left side low bar. Well, lo and behold, we did that. Then we ran up to a quick peak A, B, C, D, E. Let me just tell you, for those of you new to my uh, technique, I try to identify the lowest low bar and then count each successively higher peak, alphabetized A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. There's never an H. It's at the fourth highest peak when you've been upgraded from the symbol that you're following has been upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode it should go to at least a d at d there could be a little quick e and then there could be an alternate count but d is where other things can happen that's where you can get your sharpest decline uh that's where that's your objective and then you have to start a new uh, series of analysis or analyses okay so we've just done that a number of times and then you broke below that trend line support at 41.30 you went under it. Now we're at 41.17. You've just made a leg G to the downside. It's a 10-minute chart, so this could become a trough G, but then it has to be an alternate count G slash C. Uh, I don't want to get into all that other than to tell you that this particular technique applies. It's, it's a fractal. In other words, it is a fragment of any time frame, any chart formation in terms of time, and um, so this is the one-minute chart, and you can see we have almost the same kinds of patterns. There, there's this pattern that I call the dreaded H. Let me show you a couple of things that I like to do. I, I like to talk about three core. Uh, there we are. Let me just move it. Three core patterns I look for: straight line up or down, cup formation or an arch formation, and a mix of one and two or one and three. If it's it's red like this. It means if you pull back sharply and then you're running and you fail at a peak A or B, the first or second peak, take out that left side low. You can go a lot lower. We've been seeing a series of these right here on the left side right here, series of dreaded H's that have taken out the left side low. This one's about to test this left side low. There's an easy way to draw trend lines. You just take the outer, outer uh, wicks 
and join them. Sometimes you have to go to the body of the candle, but I want to hit the most number that I can. Two is the minimum, obviously. And then I draw a little, with it, like three sixteenths, so a little narrow channel within this framework. And that says that's the inside track repellent zone in this particular case. That's the propellant zone. So what we're looking at here is that finally you're getting a little bit of support. And the reason why I use the MACD and the stochastic and the on balance volume is that these little guys that give me really good turns, some of them give it to the, to the exact low or the exact high. Uh, in this particular instance, it's attempting to give one but the MACD is a little bit better than it was on that low. The stochastic's a little bit better. So this is one that might have a little bit more of a bounce. We'll talk about that. But within this inside track, we've got an inside track propellant zone and a repellent zone. And it's, it, it creates a channel. That's the one-minute chart. Now, um, I'm going to go to, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm looking at here. And this is, to me, this is key. I use moving averages. I remember the first time I met Larry, we were giving a workshop down in Florida, and uh, he had given a workshop, and then he made a, a joke, and he said, um, anyone who uses, and I, he named just off the top of his head, he said uh, 100 or 200 uh, period moving average, run like hell. And there was this quiet in the room, because a lot of people, I'd already been with TFNN for years, a lot of people knew that I use moving averages all the time. I consider them integral to the inner workings of the chart. You can use whatever you want. If you wake up in the morning and you open the left eye, and every day you open the left eye first before the right eye, and the market is up, you can use that as a tool. As long as you're consistent and it gives you a really good percentage win, I don't care. I've used these, and I say, the 200 period moving average, do I need the 200 moving average? No, but I put it on the chart because when it comes, you will see when I go through some of these charts, how important it can be. It's like a magnet. The closer you get to it, because it's a long look backwards, 200 bars, the closer you get to it, the more the price seems to want to hang there and stay there. It's, that's how important it is. It's like a magnet. Uh, let me just see there's a question. Okay, so... I use the nine period moving average and the 14 period moving average. They've served me and my subscribers to my opening call well for decades. Um, and I had said with my experience that I'm, I'm saying to you that the distance between this green nine daily chart right here, the distance between the nine period moving average and the 14 period moving average is so big that it's either speed or time that is going to get that nine period moving average to go under, to change from green to pink by going under the black 14 period moving average. And here we are, even with a 213 point down day, that nine is still way above. So it either says, we are really early in this particular sell-off because it's going to go into early May, or it's going to say that somehow or other, the stocks like an Amazon, and I'll just show the, put them up right now, uh, like an Amazon or any, any of the stocks that are coming up with earnings this week. And for some reason, I don't have all the earnings in front of me. But yes, Amazon at the 200 period move. I didn't even know that. I was just, I, I pulled that up only because I wanted to show something. Look how important the 200 period moving average is. It, it failed back in February right on the moving average. Got an island reversal to the downside and it's failing right here. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Trapp and Dow's down 242. Be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 A little Mozart overture. I once conducted this very overture with an orchestra. We're looking at the E-mini. Look, when the pink nine-period moving average went across from green to pink right there at about 10 o'clock this morning in the 10-minute chart, look how wide the distance is. Even when it deflected lower right there at that peak A- minus that failed with the dreaded H pattern, look how it did. And I just drew in this inside track and look, it plummeted right through in the last few minutes. The Dow's down 236, and the S&P's down 51. So um, these techniques, look how it can keep you in a trade longer than you'd even dream. This is from 10 o'clock this morning. Um, so uh, these are nice techniques. Now, what I wanted to show you is this, going back to the, to the chart. Um, so Microsoft is coming out with earnings. Google's coming out with earnings. Uh, I don't know if anybody posted any other things. Zip. Uh, I want you to look at, uh, let's see, so Google. Let me, let me just do this. So Microsoft made a peak E. But you see this vertical line around about the 9th of April? You see how the MACD was so good? You see the 9 is way over the 14. You see that the stochastic was a little lower than it had been, but it was still over 80%. Look what happened about seven sessions later on the 18th of April. You've gone just underneath that previous high. And we've seen double tops in the last year and a half. So many charts. They can go for a year or they can go for days. But the, look at this, 287.15 on the 5th for, for Microsoft. Two, um, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have said 292.08. On the uh, on the six two ninety two oh eight, and it goes to what two ninety one seventy six forty cents away from the previous high. But look at the MACD, how weak it is. Look at the stochastic, how weak it is. Look at the on balance volume, lower than it was before. But the nine is still good, so it takes time. So from the high that was made, it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is a, the yesterday was the twelfth day. 
then it took out the left side low of importance. So now I can say that Microsoft, on a, on a daily basis, I have to wait for the close today, is probably going to be in a cell signal, not yet confirmed with a uh, cell mode until I see a pink, which could happen tomorrow or the next day, depending on the earnings. What if Microsoft bounces? Well, I'm saying to you, if Microsoft bounces with these technicals, it'll be a bounce that's going to fail. But it doesn't mean to say it has to collapse. It just says that there's now tremendous resistance on the upside. Look at Google coming up with earnings uh, today or whenever it is. Uh, tomorrow, it made this double top. Look at that. Look at the beautiful time sequence. I, I look at the number of bars on the left, the number of bars. I call it bar symmetry. Except it's not from a high. It would have been from a high except for that big gap up right there. So the high that was made, the doji candle. I love to look at candles. Uh, on the on the first of December at uh, 102.59 for Google. I go to Google. I don't go to and I call it Google rather than Alphabet. I go to G, I don't go to G O O G L. I go to Google itself. The I guess this uh, this is the uh, C share or something whatever it is. Yeah, C share. Um, and then it makes this beautiful cup formation. I I didn't put in the left side right side price time match, but I usually like to go to the arch on the left. If or the arch on the right, if it's a, a cup on the right, if it's if it's a U-shaped pattern, and that would have said I would have used this as a left side, right side price time match symmetry, and it went, it would have gone almost exact or exact. Let me just go to that one. I didn't go to the plumb line at the bottom. I went to this one, and let's see if that would work, right there. Make that green. Green it is. There it is. So these are the techniques. I'll go through some of them. I'll go through some of them in more detail. But in the webinar that I'm giving to subscribers on a week from tomorrow, I'll be discussing some of these techniques. I'm, I'm going to be discussing a potpourri of stocks that we've missed on the upside that I really loved and that I really want to get into on the next big pullback. So we'll have a whole list of things to look at. So look at the time sequence from that high to that peak D. Remember the fourth highest peak, peak D, is where other, that's your objective. That's where other things can happen. Doji candle, turn around, big candle, a reverse chum wave, a, a Roman candle, inverse Roman candle, takes out the left side low, and there it is, and it comes down. And what does it do? It's two bars late, and it gets to a slightly higher high on the fifth of 109.63. And now we're going to see, because at this particular point, it's stuck in the range. But you can see the weakening of the nine-period moving average, but it's still green. It hasn't crossed negative. Don't dismiss that. When it does, then the 103.30 200-period exponential moving average, which has gone above and then pulled back below forever, is going to be the thing to watch very closely. If Google is able to hold the green nine period moving average and spike to 112 in the next four sessions, that's not only going to be a help to the general market and the S&P, but we'll see what happens uh, if, if it can actually be a trigger for some of the other big cap stocks. And you've gotten to a peak D in the weekly chart. Look at the monthly peak G, 152.10, February of 2022, Alphabet plummets down to the 80s. And now it's at 105. Start a leg B. Uh, oh, no, this is actually a leg C already. Oh, it's not very strong, but it is a leg C in the monthly chart. So gray peak A, gray peak B. I don't like to make gray peak Cs, but the MACD is so weak and the stochastic is only at 20%. I have to call this gray. I'm not changing the color right now, but I am saying uh, this one might take a little while to consolidate. So this is how I like to use things. Now let me show you something even more important. So we've been trading for subscribers, we've been trading the upside of the, uh, we still have from the October lows, uh, the diamonds and the UDOW three times long. But we are looking at all the trading we stopped on the very short term because we switched from long to short at that peak F top in the uh, S&P at 4169.48. Very next day, we went short, and we are still short via the three times short S&P. Not a full position, but we've got a good position. And what we're looking at is the double top right here in the weekly chart. I'm watching the technicals. There is still strength in the 9 over the 14, but it's saying, hey, be careful, because if there's a follow-through to the downside, 
tomorrow because of the the um, maybe because of whatever high tech stocks or tech stocks are going to come up with announcements after the bell or before the bell. That 50 period moving, I only put it there because I don't need it until I need it. But this 50 period moving average of 4,053, that's going to be key. If we touch that by Tuesday of next week, we could be seeing 4,021 being hit. I drew this in, I believe, in the SPY. Did I just? Yes, yes, I've done all the analysis in the SPY. I did this uh, uh, two days ago. Um, I forgot to show my subscribers to this. I did show them on, on Saturday in my overview. This is the type of thing we're looking at. So here's the S&P. Today's key support will be at 406.61. So far, the low is 406.97. This dashed line is a Chapman Wave inside wedge target support line. On the way up, it's green and dashed, and it's the target resistance line. And this is saying by May the 4th. There's a little bit, uh, yeah, May the 4th. There should be a test of this gap low, or the gap high from the previous bar of 404.55. We had 407.33, long way to go. I'll be back, Basil Chapman sitting here for the one o'clock to two o'clock hour. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector, as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're looking at earnings. So I've just noticed. So we've got General Motors came out this morning. Uh, General Motors is now down $1.29. I believe earlier, I'm sure I heard it that uh, GE was up 1.5% or something, now it's down 3.76%. Uh, one of the things I was looking at is this lowercase h can turn into a lowercase m. So the h, dreaded h, if it holds the left side and rallies, if it takes out the low and closes under the low, then it has limited upside. If it goes under and closes above, it says it could rally, 
but probably to an icon or a gap or a moving average above, but not to the high on the left side, unless there's a, there's a buy signal that, that's triggered in the technicals, which can take it from an H pattern to a really powerful cup formation, deep cup formation. However, sometimes it goes into a rectangle by going into another H pattern, which is lowercase m. The H goes to an M. Well, lo and behold, what do we have here? We have essentially like an H right here. This is the dreaded H right there. We're about to take out that left side low. In the uh, GM weekly chart, you've got a B that failed, and now it's got a rally, and it's going up into a potential H going to an M pattern, and the same thing in the weekly, an H that looks like an M, or rather a large H. So this is not so good. You've got a Coca-Cola came out, was it yesterday? Let me just type that in here. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. A fantastic move. It walks the nine-period exponential. What a powerful medium this is. Look, it breaks above around about the 19th of March in the 60 area, and lo and bowls, it goes all the way to 65, and it's still green. Even today, it's down only 12 cents. And it's gone through that cup formation with a leg D. We're going to be watching this closely. And the monthly chart's got this um, pennant, uh, this, this triangle formation. And it has snuck out of the resistance area, gone back into it. It's a Coca-Cola defensive stock like GIS, which is General, uh, General Mills, gone to an, a GSAC, which goes to a D right there. There's your second D. There's a Chapman Wave. Instant restart there and instant restart there. And this is, I'm calling this at least for now a B, but it could be an E slash B in the weekly chart. We'll see how it's sustained, but all the technicals are fabulous. And a leg F in the, um, in the monthly chart, General Mills. So wait a minute. So we come back and we say, okay, so what else was there? Well, McDonald's is in the defensive area. Oops, McDonald's right here. I usually put a plus sign over the D. I'll put that here for uh, for General Mills. And what do we do? We go to MCD, McDonald's, Mickey D. And it's gone to a strong leg E, but with an intraday reversal, high of 295, round number high. I love these round number highs. It means that 295, if it closes above 295 in the next uh, a bar or two, it's taken out. It means that, that you have to look for a new resistance area. But right now, that's the round number high. And it's trading at 290, five points lower. But it's only a peak C, a leg C in the weekly and a leg D in the monthly. So that longer term looks still good. And then we got a GE. So GE had a fabulous move to leg F, 102.01. Boom, it reverses intraday. It's now at 97, uh, 98.06. 97.55 was the low. But this is only leg F. You have to wait for the next session to be able to call it a peak. This is still what we call a floating letter until it makes an actual peak. But wait a minute. GEHC, which is a spectacular spinoff in December with GE spun off uh, to GE Healthcare, Inc. And... Um, so that went from the 50s to, to yesterday's high in the 87 area, and today it's plunging down 9% uh, to 79.89. Uh, but it's only a leg C. I better check this. Uh, that was a high. It looks to me like it's a penny high. So 82.59, 82.62, three cents. So what I do in a case like this, for those of you who know my work, I tend to be a little conservative, and I say it might be just three cents. Technically, this is B right here, but I'm going to make I'm going to make this a phantom peak C, saying I'm prepared to say that that is because there was a little hiccup in the unbalanced volume right there. That could be a C, and this could be a leg D, and which would put, pertain to looking at this pulling back a lot sharper, and I'm ready for it. Uh, we don't have it. I Unfortunately, I didn't get into this split before I for subscribe. I spoke about it, but some of you I know did it, but we didn't officially do it uh, because I wanted both GE and GE Healthcare. But this next turn down says maybe for the webinar that we're doing Wednesday week, maybe this is on the list as something that we want to buy. Look, it did a beautiful, this is Larry's, a to B equals C to D. I'm using not chapter with notation, but the lightning bolt pattern where it goes up, 
pulls back and then has an exact, almost to the penny, expansion to the upside one-to-one, -one, and now we're pulling back. And yet the technicals were extremely powerful. They're still very good, but they are deteriorating as we speak. So we're going to be watching this very closely out of the two between GE and GE Healthcare. I think GE Healthcare is going to be the one that has a longer-term outlook that's very positive. Next question is... Um, Oh, ALB. ALB yesterday. I didn't have a chance to get to it. Sorry. ALB is Albemarle Core Specialty Chemical uh, Manufacturer of Bromine um, Lithium. Well, it took quite a tumble from the high that was made in just under 340 back in um, about November of last year. It's trading at 177. I would call that a cut in half. And it's a peak F. That, that's what worries me about this market, that some of these stocks like this Albemarle uh, like a Dow chemical, um, have actually pulled back quite sharply here. They were leading and now they're pulling back. And that's in, a, in an area of the market that sometimes pertains to the economy in a different kind of way than, say, the, the caterpillars, etc., cetera, uh, or deers. Uh, so I'm watching this one very closely. Next question came in. Uh, let me just see if I've got it written down here. Oh, oh, Packaging Core. I, no one asked me about this. It's one that I follow all the time. Packaging Core, which I consider to be uh, a really good barometer because packaging, I mean, you can't ship anything you, to, unless you package it. We shipped something yesterday. I couldn't believe it. It was, a, it was a, a large box, but not that heavy. Going to um, Utah. And it cost $53 from UPS. I mean, wow. I mean, it was worth more than that, but not that much more than that. But I wanted to get it there, a reasonable time and all that. So anyway, looking at packaging, everything has to be shipped in packages. And look at this double top right here. And the weekly chart gets stalled in this rectangle going to higher highs and higher lows, which says that you could go if you make higher highs and lows after a very sharp flag pullback. You could go to just on, just under, um, or just above the previous high, and then you've got to be careful not to take out the midpoint of the rectangle. Well, the high that I'm talking about in PKG, Packaging Corp of America, on the ninth week of the 19th of August was 146.27. The low ball went to a peak C at 146.24. Oh, it missed it by three cents. When I say just on or just under or just above, then it pulled back held the halfway marker, and then had a retest. Yesterday's high was 145.17. So that's peak C1. This could turn out to be peak C2 if there's a pullback. Look at the gap down. I mean, that is, it's actually an island reversal. I believe that's almost an island reversal. It's trading down 8.38. I'm not happy about these things. Down 5.7% at 136.50. Packaging core, I'll be right back. Dow's down 287. Basil Chapman, this is the 1 to 2 o'clock show. I used to do the Tiger Tickets. All right. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So in the in the break, I was just all over the show because uh, questions that have come in, etc. So I, I'm I'm just going to go on from where I left off. Apple, Apple comes out with earnings, uh, I think, uh, in the next uh, within the next week. So it's trading very well. Look at the nine oh, this is the daily chart. The nine over the fourteen, really good. It's starting to weaken, but it still looks great. The MACD is the, the moving average convergence divergence has deflected lower. The on-balance volume gave that exact top reversal. Look at this, right there. But the price really hasn't reversed very much. The stochastic said 69%. I like 80%. I love over 90%. So this is saying we've got some technical deterioration, and the on-balance volume is pulling back after being overbought at that level. Mm. And um, what I am looking at, is that from the high that was made at the G slash C, where you get an instant restart, you get you get a, an alternate count, and then it went to the D. This right here um, on the fourth of April, at 166.84. Look at the technicals, how strong they were. Oops, <coughs> I forgot I didn't sneeze during the last show, so I'll do it now. We've got um, the Apple technicals on that day, early April, was fabulous. By the time it got to about the 18th or 19th, what was that? That was on the 18th, I think it was? On the 19th. On the 19th, when it hit 166, 168.16, about two points higher, the MACD was deflecting lower. The stochastic, the on-balance volume spiked, but it was lower than it was before. The stochastic was at about 82%, which is much, much lower than the uh, 86 or 7% it was at it before. And the, and the relative strength, the little gray line here in the daily chart was declining. So that's saying that Apple needs to have price dictate the, the trend because the technicals have already failed. The trend can change if the technicals start to improve. And Apple, for whatever reason, takes out the high of 168.16 uh, on a closing, must be on a closing basis, tries for 170 in the next two weeks. That'll say fabulous action because the weekly chart has been breaking out over the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. I mean, just you take a straight line. You know, there's nothing technical here. You take that straight line. Yes, it's a Chapman Wave falling axe formation right here. I don't want to get into it right now. There it is right there. But that's not the issue. The issue is that the MACD in the weekly chart is, is very strong. The stochastic is 94%. That is fabulous. The on-balance volume is weak, but the 9 is way over the 14. That's giving you temerity. That's giving you some strength. That's giving you the veracity to say Apple is holding extremely well. But it is bumping into the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone in the monthly chart. What would change that? 
when this changes from, you remember the pattern we were looking at? When it changes from this lower lows to lower highs, all of a sudden to higher lows and higher highs and a cup formation, that would be really positive. I like the chart of Apple right now. I'm thinking if you're looking longer term, the next pullback on Apple might be a nice way just to enter a small position and you can build on that if it starts to make higher highs and higher lows because it's held so well. This might just be early in the whole cycle. So I'm saying this is not the place to do it. I would have to wait for verification. And if there's an arch formation, if Apple by Thursday, today's Tuesday, by Thursday, if it's closed under 162, it's probably going to test the 160 lows, actually 159.78, the low that was made on April the 12th. Um, that's why I'm looking at that. Now, a couple of things. I drew in, as we were talking, I drew in this rectangle formation. Why did I do that? Because after years of doing this, these charts, I know that a massive move down that doesn't have strength to go peak A and then peak B and tackle all the left side ugly candles, but stalls in the big candle on the left, is going to go sideways. And you're going to go from an H, if you hold the left side low, which it's done, the one minute chart of the E-mini, it can go to a larger M-shaped pattern. So don't be a, don't don't think that this is now uh, the rectangle stalling and that it can go whew, back to the upside. I'm saying this. I've seen this pattern before. And what happens is, remember, I was looking at this here. I never discussed it. I should have discussed it. Sorry. I was looking at the 10-minute chart of the E-mini. And what I do very often in the H pattern, when it, especially when it's stretched out, when it takes out the left side low, be careful because you can get a one-to-one -one expansion there's your one-to-one -one expansion from that high to that base level in the 4130 area to the downside. Well, we did that perfectly, and then we went to peak uh, trough A, doji candle, and then a sudden F, and that was the test because at that particular point, the MACD in the day in the 10-minute chart was still horribly weak. The stochastic was flat in the single digits. On balance volume was turning down, so I was not surprised to see that whoosh to the downside. Now we've got to be careful because the one minute says if we get another whoosh to the downside, you don't want to see a propeller shaft as we saw over there with this as the fulcrum and the next move down to the 40.83 area. And you remember, for, for, for those who are listening to my show for the last couple of days, I've been saying in the S&P, if there is a sudden move down that takes out 4,088, maybe 4,082, be really careful. Let's just go there and see where we are. And that's the reason why we're short and staying short um, from the day after the high. I try my best for subscribers to get all the exact day of the lows and the highs. We try, not always successful, but to the, to the, to the, to the extent that we've ma managed to get most of them I'm happy about that. This is not ma a major high, but we did get at least this turned down. And at least it tells you that you can now put your stop so that you guarantee a profit, even if there's a gap up, because it's, this trades 24 hours there, or at least uh, with the S&P futures, the SPXS is the way we, we are going. That trades all the time. But you can see the technicals are still pretty strong in the weekly. So I'm calling this a digestive phase. It could go all the way down to the 200 period moving average. If it takes out that 40, 50, uh, 50 day moving average, then it can go down to the 200. And once again, we're going to see the 200 period moving average become the fulcrum for moves like a sine wave up and then down and then up and then down. And it keeps coming back to 40, 20. This is the fulcrum of this big move in the S&P, both up and down and up and down. So that's what I'm looking at. And now there's a couple of things. Uh, Myrna support area. So this is a daily chart. So I'll just change the symbol. I'll go MRNA, MRNA. So Myrna is Moderna. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is Moderna Inc. It's in the biotech area. You know, they were the successful COVID people. Went all the way to 497.49 in August of 2021. I think it was summer here. When did I discuss this? Uh, if I remember correctly, it was in the 80s. And I was, um, my, my wife had to go to uh, um, the Mass Eye, something or other. She just needed to have a checkup. 
So I took her there because she was going to have drops, and then she'd have to, she couldn't drive home. So I said, I'll come with you. And I had my computer out, and I'm busy sitting there with my computer while she's getting checked out. <clears throat> and an and assistant finally said, you know, I've been, I've been looking at you with these, what, what are you doing there? It looks so fascinating. I said, I'm looking at stock market charts. She said, and then she told me the story. I'll tell you the story as soon as I return. I wonder if she still has Moderna. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. It just went flying by. We're almost done. So I'm just going to say Moderna, it's got this left side, right side price time match. It has another day or two to go to test the 133 um 136 50, 66 low of the 1st of March. My, my, my guess is that that 115 area that was made earlier on last year, that could be tested or it might stop right in between. So 127 right now is going to be really important uh, shorter term uh, support for Moderna. Then FXI, I saw this earlier in my show and I forgot to do it. Yes, FXI is coming down. Same thing. This is the uh, the iShares China large cap ETF. Big arch formation coming back down. Dreaded H pattern. It better hold 27. Otherwise, that 25 area is going to be lurking very quickly. So the question is, where do I see all this going? I'll do more of this in my show tomorrow at 10 o'clock in my Tiger Technicians Hour. But as I see it right now, 33,300 is absolutely... 
500 is the key support. We're already in the 500s. The next level is 33,300 to 33,200. I have to see what happens with the nine period moving average because if it's taking its time, this can last into next week. So I, I, I just don't, I don't want to guess right now. I'm just saying, yes, it's accelerating lower, but the nine is still way above the 14 in the nine in the in the mag in the uh, the Dow daily chart. So go one step at a time. It does say that resistance is extremely st strong in the 33,800 to 33,900 area. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to hand you over. We've got, uh, we've got a show that's going to be rebroadcast probably Tommy Jr. from this morning. And then Tom O'Brien at 3 o'clock. I'll be back with Tom. I'll discuss a stock that we have for subscribers that is co doing something completely different to the market. But I don't want to talk about it right now. I'll talk about it when we get back together a little later on today. Meantime, back at the round, check out my opening call, check out my uh, my newsletter, and check out my show, The Tiger Technician's Hour. I think you'll be uh, looking at some techniques that are very simple to use, and it does all the work for you. You just have to interpret it. I'll be back uh, in a little while. Otherwise, see you tomorrow at 10. Basil Chapman signing off. The Dow's down 318. Have a great rest of the day. Building wealth.